<laughs> Most of the young people that sign up for this camp and get accepted truly want to be here. They truly want to try something different. But it's not until you get to the end and you say, yeah, I was a part of that team. I think that's what really brings it all home for them. Timber Frame Leadership Camp 2021. Well, good morning, everyone. Oh, you guys are not awake, are you? Did you guys have a rough night last night? Timber framing is a neat aspect, and, and I enjoy it, and friends of mine enjoy it, but we don't see kids timber framing a lot. And so I think the, the idea was, let's, let's give kids something really unique and different and fun that we think is fun, and let's package it around doing something that when it's all said and done, they look at it and say, I did that. It's not unlike any other year where you kind of sit here and you look at the model right now as it stands, and you say to yourself, how in the world do we accomplish that in the next three days? Now the finish point won't be exactly like this, but I think it'll be uh, pretty impressive nonetheless. You know, let's give kids this awesome sense of accomplishment and see where that goes. Ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Let's do it, baby. All right, meeting adjourned. Break. Last season, we, we had this epic tree house. There's a lot of kids. About a week before that camp kicked off, I got introduced to a guy named Jim Poppelman and somebody said, you gotta see what Jim's doing with these bridges. And I thought, wow, you know, a covered bridge. Wouldn't that be pretty cool? I've always had a passion for old historic structures, especially covered bridges. I brought it up to Matt and he seemed very receptive. He says, I know just the place for it. We took Jim's energy and his drive and his love of covered bridges and we mixed it with our group of awesome instructors and amazing timber framers. And we came up with this kind of meld of timber framing, covered bridge, reclaimed material, and it's functional, it serves a real need. And it looks pretty cool next to a treehouse. You know, the process started months and months ago. It started with abutments and moving earth and pouring concrete and facing that concrete with real stone and the mortar and all that. Overall, you know, the prep work put us in a really good place, but I don't think any of us truly understood how much time certain aspects would take. On projects like this, you have to win on day one. So today is the biggest day, but that's not to say that the next two days aren't critically important as well. But if we get behind now, we'll be behind for the rest of the project. I try to roll the punches, but in my mind, there's, there's a level that we have to hit every day. And uh, it can get complicated. Hey, hey, you gotta, you gotta go that way, okay, go. There's something about 30,000 pounds on a whole bunch of clay yeah. that just doesn't seem to ever work well. You just gotta learn that you're gonna end up where you should be, no matter what. Whether you like it or not, whether it, it, it hits the mark that you thought it was, or it didn't, you, everything's gonna be all right. Well, that was easy. I didn't take any time. one good not great day two was manageable a lot of fur flying on day two though we had a lot of things that needed to get done to set up for other things and then at the same time we were trying to divide and conquer on a whole bunch of tasks There we go. There we go. Hold on, right there. And I'm good on this post. Oh yeah, now we're gaining ground, baby. We ended on a, on a high note. We got most of the main members of the frame either in place or worked to a point where on day three, we could easily set them up and get them going. Day three was a smashing success. 
We got the rafters up, and now everyone can see what this thing is gonna fully be. When you don't have the rafters up, it does it really look like a structure? Eh, you need a roof over a covered bridge. That's why it's called a covered bridge. So you need some of those elements in place. Nice work, peoples. For these young people that have worked their tails off for three days, they're able to step back and look at it and go, yeah, yeah, I did that. It's been really great. We came a long way since day one. I think everybody's supportive of each other. Everybody's there for each other. Everybody as a team, we're all one, and we're trying to get this thing done. I think just the whole idea of timber framing has been amazing to me. I mean, this whole bridge project has been unreal. I mean, I remember sitting there the first day looking at that thinking, there's no way we're going to do that. And then it's day three and I'm looking at this, I'm like, we're doing that. That is amazing. One of the things that we all love about this camp, from the instructors and you know, people that you know help volunteer and pull this thing off and put it all together, is that we have this moment where we can step back, take a look at what hard work and determination and stick to itness and all those kind of cool things that come with teamwork and accomplishing a major task. We just have it right now, and that's really awesome. You know, when you build these things, you don't build them for today or tomorrow. These are things that can literally last hundreds of years. These are legacy type projects. So every time I drive past camp, I look at these different projects that we've done, and it's like, man, that's very cool. Awesome, class dismissed. Next year, we're gonna do something equally as unique, and we're building top so we can chop this material out a lot easier. We have to use a handsaw, but it builds character. So we like it. It builds character, huh? Timber framing is a neat aspect, and, and I enjoy it, and friends of mine enjoy it, but we don't see kids timber framing a lot. It's just tough to find skilled laborers. It's tough to find people to do certain jobs. And so we, we kind of had this mindset of, you know, how are kids developing the skills in the trades these days? And, and, and then in a cool way, can we get kids interested in timber framing? Remember, we got two equal legs, right? Yeah. And we lay out from which face? The outside, yes. So, from the outside face, you have to have equal measurements on both ends, right? So let's do it. I think it's incredibly important because if we don't teach them, then who's to carry it on? The skill is never lost as long as we keep teaching it. It is that simple. I don't want to point out the obvious. Didn't this post upside down? Yeah. The workforce needs more young people, young adults who are passionate about doing things with their hands. So you guys, it's kind of an important job because without these, this bridge is going to you know, fall apart. I mean, we build a nation on being able to be industrious and make things and grow and develop and, and we're, we're leaders in the world. We've always been that way, but when you don't have a workforce to take all that ingenuity and all that creativity and do something with it, are you really a nation of builders? Yeah, you're covered you're this ignoring way. this line. You're cutting there. Like that? That's all right, yeah. Yep, then get it, get it pretty close and you, know, you can touch it and you can see where you're starting back off. And then you can start your blade. At the end of the day, this is what this country needs. We need to develop more young people in these fields. It's critically important. 
And so if this is us doing our little part to help aid in that, then I say that's one more reason to continue doing what we're doing. This timber frame camp has been a huge learning experience for me. My great-grandfather was a woodworker and my dad does a lot of carpentry and I've kind of started to follow that. I enjoy it so I plan to take this home and use these ideas to see what I can do. Campers have an opportunity to develop skill sets that'll serve them in their own projects. Whether they're timber framers, whether they're construction people, whether they're actually doing anything in the field, it doesn't really matter. They now have a little bit of that knowledge. They're now not afraid of it. Or when people come in, they can ask the right questions. The idea was, let's, let's give kids something really unique and different and fun that we think is fun, and let's package it around doing something that when it's all said and done, they look look at it and say, I did that. What are the key assets that you feel a leader holds? Leaders just step up and uh, do what needs done and shows everyone around them how to do it and really organize as well. Always remember to gain respect, you have to show respect. And always lead by example and that will take you a long way. It's really something that's a little bit more granular. A good machinist always, always takes his own burrs off because the next guy's going to pick it up and he's going to get cut. A leader is someone who is there to sacrifice, is someone who is going to, you know, show up early and leave late. <laughs> you know, a leader is someone that's going to teach and not talk down to. Yep, it's good if you start here, on, so you're removing all this material down to this line here, right? So then we need to bring this line all the way to the end. For us, leadership is showing that you're doing things the right way for the right reasons, with the right people around you. You have to lead by example whenever you're talking about being a better leader. Nice. All right, keep going down. Actions speak louder than words. Hey, we're just going to go just like last time. Me first. I had a coach used to tell me, are your actions speaking so loudly I can't hear what you're saying? And we've seen that. We've seen a lot of these individuals that Beautiful. are tapped in, as we like to say on the field as well. You know, they've been committed from day one and they haven't worn down and they're bringing others with them to the party. There's only me and one other person who's been here all three years. We kind of have a good grasp on everything, and so helping lead the newer campers definitely helps with a lot of leadership skills. Just this part on the bottom yep. is what we're going to do. Yes, that's, okay. that's our half lap. That's okay. on top. All right. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So I'll leave you in charge up here. It makes me feel like proud of myself for like showing them the skills that I have to be able to trust me with a skill like this. You know, are you going to be asked to step up and do things that are kind of difficult? Yeah. Are you going to have to show up early and leave late? Yeah. We all have to do those things. We're doing nothing but kind of creating a pathway for some of these young people that come to our camps to think about what is going to happen in their lives and hopefully take some of the tools and some of the things that we work on and, and the way that we do it and apply it to their own personal situations. Way to go, Caleb. I think you may have it now. When you think about leadership, think about the things that you saw here today. Think about the people who 
you know, got down on your level, right? To help you, you know, hold something and show you something a little bit different, or maybe even got on you for a second when it came to safety, right? That leadership quality that you saw working with some of these instructors, the leadership qualities you guys saw in each other, those things will serve you really well. And you're gonna do that for the rest of your lives. Again, from everybody here, for an amazing job completing something that was monumental. From all the instructors, we thank you guys. This was an awesome year. Congratulations. The Ohio Historic Bridge Association got started in 1960 to save a particular covered bridge that was built in 1876 in Zanesville. This was a time when the U.S. was losing a lot of their built heritage, and it resulted in the passage of the Historic Preservation Act in 1966 by Congress and the creation of the National Register of Historic Places. The Zanesville folks thought covered bridges were an important part of their heritage and they wanted to save a part of it. There is no one doing anything with covered bridge construction except these kind of workshops that the Light Foundation is funding. And that's why we were so interested in helping support this project. plan for every piece of wood that I have. My wife would tell you that I have a real problem. I don't know that I have a plan for every piece, but I do know that preserving the history of the barns and the material and everything that went into it is worth every second of it. There's nothing easy about taking down barns and reclaiming material and finding a place to store it and then take care of it while it's in storage and then eventually move it from one pile to another pile to get to that one that's 30 stacks down. But is it worth it? Yeah. This came out of a barn not too far from here. I mean, look at the size of this thing, right? Look at how big and beefy this thing is. What do you think its job could have been? Floor joist. Like a floor joist, there you go. They call these sleeper logs, right? So think about all the different material and how it's been repurposed and the different ways that you can use it because we're putting this thing in to hold up the main truss of this awesome covered bridge. One of the aspects of this build that may get overlooked is the fact that we are putting our hands on material that 200 years ago, some amazing craftsman created for a purpose. It served that purpose, it lived its life, and then we were lucky enough to become the stewards of how that gets utilized down the road. What's unique about the reclaimed wood is these are old growth timbers. They came from the old growth forest when the, the first settlers came and took the trees down. The strength that these things have because of the density is unmatched by anything nowadays. And so you gain a lot by reusing these because of that, that strength component. You know, the, the, the canopy was so high, they grew so tight before they grew large. With this timber frame covered bridge, we said, okay, it, we need these massive bottom cords. Oh, I know where those are coming from. Those are the floor joists out of an old barn and oh, they're beautiful, they're huge. You know, we need uh, king posts and we need angle braces and all this stuff. And we're not gonna go source these things from our local lumber yard. We're gonna take the material that was crafted by people hundreds of years ago, and we're gonna turn it into something really amazing. You know, really, we're telling one awesome story over and over and over again with one little project. And I think they see that. I think they understand that. And for anybody that's ever done it, you know, you, you know how cool it is to take something, repurpose it, and make it useful.
you know, we're literally telling the story of Chinawood Trails. We're telling the story of the pioneers that built these early structures and we're turning them into a covered bridge. If that's not awesome, I don't know what is.